first started dating, we hit things off. We would sing together, we would be silly together. And you know, like, I felt like I could be myself around him. Um, we have a lot of the same personality. Well, first off, when we met, we were both kind of at the same stage in life, kind of just all about hanging out, drinking, partying. So we were, you know, outgoing, and, well, he's a lot more outgoing than me. But we were both... I did want to kind of... He talks to the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, he... I'm more... If I, know, if I know you, then I'm very outgoing with you. But... If I don't know you, I'm just not talking to you at all. I just don't like you. <laughs> so, but, I mean, when it came to, like, hanging out, drinking, liking the same things, we were very similar. And after hanging out for a while, you know, and getting to know each other for a couple of months before we got together, then I guess that's when I knew he was the one for me. I think I'm gonna miss the way he makes me smile, the way no matter how pissed off I get at him, he knows how to make me laugh. And no matter how much I hate him at the moment, he knows how to like make me get over whatever it is that he did. I never got to call him. <laughs> it was more so when you got a phone call. Um, the first month he was out there, he was Red Rivered, or I, I think that's the proper term, but um, basically they shut down the entire camp because something goes wrong. There was a huge explosion and everything, and I didn't get to talk to him. Well, I didn't hear from him for over a month, and I completely freaked out, thought the worst, but at the same time, I was like, all right, if something really happened to him, I would have known by now. But there were very few phone calls, yeah. maybe like, Five. Yeah, Skype yeah. and email That's how you communicate. Skype <laughs> only the, during the beginning and the end Yeah. because he was um, on the boat the rest of the time. So we only got to Skype for the first month, I think, and for the very last month. Yeah. But in between, it was emails. And whenever the emails was like the boat couldn't get signal and he couldn't email me, it was yeah. maybe like two weeks sometimes that I would not hear from him. The boat goes into a... Uh, can't think of the word, but pretty much... It's blacked out from any type of communication from anywhere, so you can't send out messages. I just came back on this previous Monday, it's Wednesday now, from California, and I was there for two weeks. I went out there to say goodbye to my husband and pack up our house since we're getting rid of it while he goes on deployment. It was really sad. Like We went to a few like places like L.A. and San Diego, but it was just sad because I know this was going to be the last time I was going to see him for the whole year. So, War in Afghanistan. Two Friday nights ago, we were there at Bagram Airfield because that was the night we reported Tim Russert's death. Our trip ended. We came home without showing you some of what we had reported there. Tonight, we have a look at life there and the war effort now in its seventh year. <laughs> Four years after the invasion of Iraq, it's a good time to take stock. Since the war began, 3,192 U.S. troops have been killed, more than 24,000 wounded. At least 50,000 Iraqi civilians have died. The cost has been at least $351 billion and is projected to exceed half a trillion by the end of the year. Yeah, I honestly still to this day... I have a bunch of friends that are still in the military and, you know, I have friends over in Afghanistan and everything that I made while I was out at the base and I don't listen to the news, I don't listen to the radio, I don't listen to any of that because every time I hear that something goes wrong, I freak out right away because I think worst case scenario. Because, I mean, not just me, even his friends and everything else were like, wow, 
he is not the same person I've always known. Like, he just has a different outlook on everything. And I can't even say it's a positive outlook. He has a negative outlook on everything. And he's just very serious all the time. He doesn't know how to let go and enjoy himself. When he came back, it was all about his friends. Like, I want to be with my friends. I want to be with my friends and nothing else. Like, he had off. I mean, he didn't have time off, but he would come out of work at, like, go in at, like, 6.45 and get out by, like, 11 for a week. And I'm, it's, like, 5 p.m. And I'm like, where are you? He's like, oh, I'm just helping my friends move in. And I'm like, you know, I haven't seen you in six months. Yeah, but I just want to be with my friends. It was, like, a total shock to me. After he came back from deployment, like I was saying earlier, you know, they act so different. It's just a completely different world that they're used to. So both of us trying to get used to that, it was, you know, I, I think we were just putting so much work into it that it made us both just tired of everything. And we were, you know, made us question whether or not we should be together because we were fighting so much. I couldn't understand why he was acting that way and he couldn't understand why I couldn't see that he just wanted to be with his friends. To me, it's like when you're a military wife, you change your entire life around and you move states away usually from your family and you drop everything you drop your job you drop your friends your family and you move just specifically to be with that person you know because that's where they're stationed so um we went through so many problems so many months wondering whether or not we should stay together or you know just take a break from each other and stuff so a couple of months after you know we decided to go to counseling because things were just getting so bad. It was to the point where, you know, he didn't want to be home. He just wanted to go out with his friends. Any type of spare money that he had, he used it with his friends. Didn't care about what, you know. I mean, obviously the bills were paid. You know, we got whatever we needed. But anything that was spare, he just didn't care about blowing $200 going to a bar with his friends. The Pentagon survey found that 20% of married troops in Iraq are planning a divorce or separation. I found out he was cheating on me, and he cheated on me when we first started going out um, our sophomore and junior year of high school, and that was the only time he did. We were going through a hard time after he got out, not got out, but when he got back from Afghanistan, and it was rough back and forth. We started going to counseling, and there was this girl who was a female Marine, and they, I guess, were apparently talking all the time for like hours. And we shared the same phone bill and everything else. So I knew that he was talking to her all the time. So I had called her and asked her what was going on. And this was before we were ever facing any kind of problems. But she answered the phone and she, she was very nasty to me. So all of a sudden, I was having a get together with my friends one night and she showed up at the house. And I knew as soon as I was talking to her, I was like, oh, I was like, hi, I'm Kaim's wife, nice to meet you, who are you? And she shook my hand and she told me her name. And as soon as she told me her name, a light bulb went off in my head and I was like, oh. She was standing outside and I told her that she needed to leave. She didn't want to leave. It turned into this huge fight. We did separate for a while. Um, he moved into the barracks, which is one of the options that they give you when you're um, separating from your spouse. They do know that a lot of people go through problems when you come back from deployment. So they don't automatically give you a divorce, you know, like they don't let you file for, the, you know, for divorce right away. You have to be separated for, I think, six months. So for six months, they let you live in a barracks room, which is like a dorm room typically. Um, and after the six months, if you guys still think that you want to separate, um, then they go ahead and grant you the divorce papers, but you still have to wait another year after that to actually get divorced. So we went through a lot of problems. It wasn't actually for almost a year after he came back from deployment that we were able to fix everything. For any girls who are entering into a military marriage or any kind of military lifestyle where their boyfriend, fiance are, is in the military, just be strong and be entertained, be like independent and also 
to live your own life and don't give up too much of your life. Try and before you go to boot camp, let your spouse know what it's going to be like. Uh, like you can say to yeah. her, because I told her plenty of times, but you have to like reiterate and like, I guess, read up on it or, you know, go on the internet, try and speak to some spouses because you don't really, you can't really get the full effect of it until you can see it yeah. through someone else's eyes. Not only, you kind of have to be in the situation because, I mean, he told me several times, but until someone tells you, you know, like someone can tell you 10 times, hey, be careful when you do this because it's hard or whatever. But you don't know how hard it is until you're actually in the situation and it's you going through the problem. No matter how many times people give you advice, it doesn't matter. Because